The story begins with John Derbyfield watching a parade on his way home. He meets a man who says that John is a descendant of an aristocratic family called de Beville. Despite learning that he has no hidden wealth to look forward to, John is still happy with his recently discovered lineage. Nearby, a group of young men sees women dancing by the fields. One of them decides to join in on the dancing. Once he's done, he quietly leaves while looking back at a girl named Tess, who also watches him intently. Not long after that, John passes by, boasting about his aristocratic lineage. A girl asks Tess if John has lost his mobbles, but Tess, who turns out to be his daughter, says that her father is only stressed because they lost their horse. When Tess gets home, Mrs. Derbyfield tells her about the news. She then asks Tess to care for her siblings while she goes to the tavern to fetch her father. In the tavern, John is busy showing off his spoon with the de Bearville crest. Mrs. Derbyfield then says a wealthy woman shares the same family name as them in a nearby town, and they should send Tess to claim kin. That way, they can receive financial assistance in their time of need. Tess arrives just in time to hear her mother's plans and says she doesn't like the idea. Despite her protests and John's disinterest in the matter, Tess finds herself at the de Bearville estate the next day. Tess goes inside the estate and meets a man named Alec. He claims to be the son of the rich Mrs. de Beville, who, as it turns out, is an invalid. Alec, who quickly takes a liking to Tess, treats her well. He does realize her intentions for going there and tells her to put an end to it. Instead, he helps her by arranging for Tess to work at their estate by managing their poultry. Despite her better judgment, Tess accepts the job offer for the sake of her family. As she leaves, her siblings ask if Alec is the man their sister will marry and Mrs. Derbyfield seems welcome to the idea. On the way to the estate, Alex starts making a move on Tess, which displeases her. She intentionally drops her hat so she can get down from the carriage and walk her way to the estate. While working on the poultry farm, a worker reveals that Alex's true family name is Stokes, not de Bearville. It seems their family bought the aristocratic title so that they could feel important. Later that day, Tess meets the blind Mrs. de Bearville who tells her to try learning how to whistle for the sake of her beloved chickens. One of the workers mentions Alec and Mrs. de Beville fails to hide her displeasure toward him in front of her workers. Alec finds Tess struggling to whistle and gives her some pointers. With his help, she manages to get the hang of it. Alec also reveals that he's not in his mother's good books. Before leaving, he tells Tess she should go to him if she ever needs help. Another woman passes by and scowls at Tess for being Alex's new favorite hand. On their way back to the estate one morning, Tess unwillingly gets into a fight with the same woman. However, Alec is nearby and breaks them up, taking Tess along with him. While riding, Alec tells Tess he bought her family a new horse, which makes her feel confused yet grateful. During that time, Alec confesses his feelings for Tess and tries to make a move on her. Surprised, Tess pushes him off the horse, causing him to bleed from the back of his head. Guilty, Tess apologizes to Alec and lets him kiss her. Alec then takes advantage of the opportunity. Despite her resistance, Tess fails to stop Alex's advances, and he ends up having his way with her. After that, Tess tries to go along with Alex's desires for a time but eventually realizes she can't take it. She decides to go home one morning without telling anyone. Alec tries to convince her to stay, but when he realizes he can't stop her anymore, he decides to just give her a ride home. Before parting ways, Alec tells Tess that if she ever needs help, she just needs to let him know, and he'll give her whatever she needs. Time passes, and Tess is now the mother of Alex's child. She cares for the baby whenever possible, even during her field work breaks. One night, a priest comes to the Derby field home to baptize Tess's baby. However, John stops the priest since he doesn't want the baby to be baptized for the dishonor it brought to their family name. Since the priest can't baptize her child, Tess decides to do it herself. The next day, Tess informs the priest about what she's done. She then asks if the priest can give her baby a proper burial. The priest declines, saying it's not something he can decide on his own. Since the priest doesn't want to, Tess does it herself later that night. Tess leaves for another town to look for work. She finds a job on a dairy farm owned by Mr. Crick. Tess quickly makes friends and gets comfortable in her new workplace. She eventually learns about a young man named Angel Claire, a possum's son that wants to be a farmer. One of the workers, Marion, says that Angel is a silent man who seems to mock old aristocratic families. He is the young man Tess met years ago who danced with the ladies in the fields near her village. Eventually, Tess catches Angel's attention, and he falls in love with her. The same thing happens to Tess, but it isn't strange since all the girls on the dairy farm seem to have feelings for Angel. One day, while wearing their Sunday best, the girls struggle to cross a flooded road. Angel arrives and carries all the girls across, which each of them likes. 
Tess tries to cross herself, but Angel says he went to all that trouble just for her. At that moment, the girls knew who Angel had his eyes for. One afternoon, while harvesting milk, Angel and Tess finally surrender to their feelings and share a kiss. Angel owns up to what he's done and tells Tess he loves her. Angel returns to his hometown a few days later and gets greeted by a woman named Mercy. Angel says he's there to visit his parents quickly for urgent business. Angel joins his family for a meal, and his brothers belittle him for pursuing a career in farming instead of going to university and being more educated. After the meal, Angel tells his parents it's about time for him to get married. Angel's parents are happy and say that Mercy will make a good wife for him. However, Angel shocks them by saying he wants to marry Tess, not Mercy. When he returns to the dairy farm, Angel doesn't waste time and proposes to Tess. However, Tess rejects him despite admitting that she loves him. She also doesn't give him the reason behind her decision. Tess suffers after rejecting Angel's proposal and asks for her mother's advice. Mrs. Derby Field tells her not to say a word to Angel about her past with Alec. One night, Tess tries to tell Angel the true reason why she rejected him. She fails. Instead, Tess tells him it's because of fear that he will hate her if he learns she descended from a line of aristocrats. Then, Angel proposes again, and Tess agrees to be his wife. Later that night, Tess writes a letter for Angel and confesses the truth about her past. She slips it under his doorstep, hoping that he'll be able to read it. In the morning, she waits for Angel outside his house. When he gets out, Angel happily approaches Tess and gives her a warm hug. The two finally let go and let their love and happiness blossom. One day, after delivering flowers to Angel's house, Tess learns that when she slid her letter that night, it went under Angel's rug. She now realizes that he never knew the truth about her all along. She tries to tell Angel about her past before they get married but fails. During their honeymoon, Angel confesses that he had an affair before she met Tess and asks for her forgiveness. Tess quickly forgives him, and hopeful that he will have the same reaction, she confesses her secret. Much to her surprise, Angel couldn't handle the truth. Dazed, he walks out of the house, in disbelief that he was living a lie all along. Tess goes after him to apologize, but he says she is not the woman he loved. At that point, he thinks of her as another woman that took the shape of his lover. He also blames everything that happened to Tess on her aristocratic lineage. The next day, Angel tells Tess that as long as Alec is alive, they can't be together as husband and wife. Wanting to save face, Angel sends Tess home and tells her to stay there until he's ready to be with her again. He then decides to travel to Brazil. Before he leaves, Angel gets a visit from one of the girls from the dairy farm. Knowing she also likes him, Angel asks the girl if she'd leave everything behind and join him in Brazil. The girl says she'd do so in a heartbeat. Angel then asks the girl if she loves him more than Tess. To his surprise, the girl says number. She tells him no girl on the farm loved him more than Tess. Saddened, Angel leaves the girl and makes his way to Brazil. Sometime later, Tess makes her way to see Marion. While on the road, a man tries to pick her up but eventually recognizes her as Alex's fancied woman. Tess reaches Marion's home by nightfall, and the girls embrace each other. Marion, who got fired from the dairy farm for becoming an alcoholic, is also in a difficult state but welcomes her old friend nonetheless. Tess stays with Marion while working in the muddy fields nearby. She later discovers that the man who recognized her by the road is the supervisor of that place. One day, Tess visits Angel's home, but nobody answers her. She then returns to continue working with Marion. Having discovered that Tess is working in one of his fields, Alec pays her a visit. Alec says he knew nothing about her circumstances until her mother wrote to him about it. He says he would have fulfilled his role for their child if she had told him. Alec asks Tess to come to her senses and go with him, but she refuses his offer. He then tells her that her father is ill and that her entire family will be evicted when he passes away. Alex says he wants to give his sincere help, but Tess keeps rejecting him. In his frustration with Tess's hard-headedness, he insults Angel for abandoning her, which makes Tess angry. When her father passes away, Tess and her family become homeless. Alec once again offers to help them, but Tess, knowing full well what he wants in return, continues to reject his offers. Tess and her family camp outside the town's church after failing to find a temporary place to live in. Some time passes and Angel comes home. He tells his parents it took him a while to return because he fell ill and had to recover. Angel finds Tess's letters and starts reading them. He goes to Tess's hometown but discovers they no longer live there. Angel eventually meets with Mrs. Derby Field, who tells him to leave her be. However, after he begs and she takes pity on him, Mrs. Derby Field tells Angel that Tess is in a town called Sanburn. 
Angel and Tess finally meet in San Bern. Tess reveals that she is now married to Alec and tells Angel they can no longer be together. Angel leaves, and Tess finds herself moping and in tears. Alec, who seems to have gotten used to Tess moping, treats it as one of her usual morning routines. He reads the papers and tells her to get ready to visit one of their friends later that day. Sometime later, the housemaid sees Tess leaving the house in a hurry. She then notices something dripping from upstairs and, when she inspects it, discovers that it's blood. Tess meets up with Angel at the train station. She reveals that she took Alex's life. Angel immediately promises that he won't abandon her and will do everything to protect and save her. The couple gets out at the next station and heads north on foot. Angel says they will go abroad once they reach their destination. They eventually find a mansion for sale and break into it to stay for the night. In the morning, the man science caretaker arrives and sees the couple. Realizing this, the two quickly pack up and leave the place. After a long day of walking, Angel and Tess stop by Stonehenge to rest. When the morning comes, Angel watches Tess sleep as the police arrive. The police tell him they can no longer escape since the entire country is already looking for them. Angel looks at Tess and asks the police if they can let her sleep a little longer. When Tess wakes up, she realizes the police are waiting for her and says she is ready. The couple goes with the police, and eventually, Tess gets hanged for the crime she committed. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.